Live from the Wynn Hotel in Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering Magento Imagine 2018. Brought to you by Magento. Hey, welcome to theCUBE. We are live in Las Vegas at the Wynn for Magento Imagine 2018. I'm Lisa Martin with my co-host John Ferrier. And John, we're, we have a really exciting day planned talking all things digital commerce innovation. What are you most excited about? Well, Magento is one of those companies that people know about, but it's a rocket ship in e-commerce, mainly because they've cracked the code on a few things, Lisa, that I'm really impressed with. One is they've modernized e-commerce. E-commerce has been around 25 plus years in the web with internet. But it's, you think of it like the old Amazon, eBay, you know, database world, but now we're living in a cloud world, cloud native's big, and there's still money to be made in retail as everything goes online. The digital transformation is impacting retail more than ever, uh, smartphones is over 10 years old, so the question I've always asked is, where's the modern stack? So these guys have cracked the code on that. Two, uh, and they're powering a lot of impressive sites and the, and the growth is phenomenal, but they have an ecosystem partner network that you can see behind us, if you can look at the camera, you'll see hundreds of partners. So, I mean, e-commerce obviously isn't going away. If you look at the growth of digital, digital natives are coming online, people want to do things digitally, but also it's changing the offline consumer experience. So, there's a gap traditionally between online and offline, that's coming together. This is only going to get more acute as cloud, mobile, um, decentralized, blockchain, there's still e-commerce in our future and it's just never going away and these guys have a really interesting approach so we're excited to find out more here uh, on what they're doing, their success, and how e-commerce is going to evolve. To me, that's the number one story is, you know, can people leverage turnkey, scalable, digital technologies to you know, do business. So Magento has built their reputation on helping retailers to target online shoppers. You talked about online and offline, but they're now moving into the B2B space. As consumers, we expect, yeah, Amazon set the bar obviously very high, right? We expect to be able to get whatever we want. As consumers, we're channel agnostic. We don't care. Yeah. We just want to be able to find whatever we want, when we want it, have it shipped to us, have it shipped to the store. And that is spilling over into the B2B space. And Magento's data suggests that 93% of B2B buyers want to be able to buy yeah. online, which not only changes the sales model, it changes the marketing model as well. I mean, they're taking the charge. That's their slogan here. And the thing that's interesting is that it used to be nice little buckets. B2C, business to consumer. B2B, business to business. But really, it's a consumer to consumer role. And one of the things that you see right now, social media, is consumers are directly involved in either the content, development process or the engagement process. And if you look at no further than the, the side effects of what we see with Facebook, uh, the downside of this whole data conversation is that the users want to be in control and they are in control. So you're seeing a, you know, almost a um, blurring of the lines between B2B, B2B, B2B and C2C where people need to tailor the e-commerce experience and have the data insights either real time and or intelligent wise to know that the consumer is participating offline, they're online, but also peer to peer. The consumer to consumer relationship is to me going to be the cutting edge forward uh, innovation area that a lot of these companies are going to innovate on because a lot of referrals are going on organically now as it's not so much audience, anymore, because the audience is on, online digitally, it's about the network connection. So, as people have a network connection with their friends, and you're seeing Facebook proving this, and LinkedIn and others, is that you're going to start to see that data be very important. So, I see a future where e-commerce stacks have to support consumer to consumer in any context, business to business, B2C, business to consumer, consumer to consumer, this is the holy grail, and whoever can scale that, again, at large scale, while creating a money-making opportunity, value creation opportunity for ecosystems, is the winning formula. One of the themes that popped up during the keynote this morning um, with a number of folks that were on stage, including their CEO and the Pittsburgh Steelers, was personalization. That's something that we expect as consumers and as well as business buyers. We want to be able to have something where we know they know us, but we don't want to be marketed to. So Magento has done an interesting job and we're going to have a number of guests on the show today talking about how they're enabling this more personalized, customized, you mentioned the word tailored experience as a consumer yeah. to be able to get what I want, when I want it, but also through a now omni-channel. We're going to hear a lot about omni-channel today and how yeah. that's enabling new revenue streams, reduction in attrition, 
They talked about um, one of their newest um, features Magento did with the instant purchase. We yeah. want to be able to click once, buy it, and have it something that means something to us, be able to buy it again yeah. and again and again. I mean, this is the challenge, right, in e-commerce is table stakes are some of these features like instant click buying, having the kind of personalization, but the real uh, angle to me is um, bringing in the personalization so that the consumer's involved. So, so what you see with the Steelers, for instance, they, they do real-time shooting of the game and incorporate the fan experience into the e-commerce experience really seamlessly and in real time. And so what you have is a change of a methodology. And so e-commerce used to be a very you know, one-directional monologue, kind of you put content out there, people browse and consume. Now you have a real-time interactivity piece which changes the content production perspective. And the Steel has pointed that out. In the tech world, we used to call this agile programming when we write software development. So you start to see the concept of agile come into e-commerce where, you know, whether it's an entrepreneur, uh, Melissa baking goods, or a business, they want to focus on the business at hand, not provisioning technology. So you have to have a partner like a Magento or someone who can build all that tech turnkey so that people can focus on the business at hand, and that, that's agile. So if they decide to incorporate something really fast, you can't have this waterfall process. And that's the problem with the content market, and that is a legacy baggage of e-commerce where, hey, we built it, we ship it, and we got to go back and decide what to change, and we got to push it to the code base. You're provisioning technology. That is an old way of doing things. That's not ideal for the modern era. You need to be very agile, very scrum-like to use that term, and content people need that to be successful because the difference between real time and having that right experience is a matter of seconds and or context specific, so agile content can't be waterfall. Exactly, agile content that's data driven. You mentioned data earlier. We're going to actually be talking with Anita Andrews who's going to be talking about what Magento can facilitate and deliver their users with respect to BI. The Steelers talked about that. They actually see when the Steelers aren't doing well, they see a reduction in uh, merchandise, merch that's actually purchased on site. So they have the data to be able to make the decisions yeah. to deliver this personalized content in a way that they can see yeah. how can we um, adjust our sales structure to be able to you know, capitalize on revenue opportunities. I mean, responding to data is really critical. So the Steeler example is great. When they lose, there's no sales because everyone's kind of bummed out. When they win, they sell everything out. So you know, in sports world, which is that big part of Magento's uh, base, you know, managing um, the assets of running the franchise, for instance, becomes a real big thing, whether it's food or apparel or any kind of fan experience. They can adjust either dynamic pricing, these are the things that the, the, the owners, the, the content owners want. They want to be able to say, hey, we can understand sentiment in, in, from the data and then adjust the marketing mix and content mix based upon what's going on in real time. That's a game changer. And if you could do that on a form factor for web, mobility, and uh, future formats, whether it's cryptocurrency, I mean, that is going to be, to me, the tell sign of who's innovating. And speaking of innovation, this is the eighth event that Magento, the eighth Imagine event, our first time here. But you mentioned their partner ecosystem. There's 1,150 solutions and technology partners. You can see quite a few of them behind us here. A lot of people are needing this type of technology to be able to better merge the online and offline worlds across consumers, across businesses. We have some great guests here that are going to talk to us about how they're doing that, enabling multi-retail, yeah. enabling multi-channel, and really enabling this true globalization yeah. of commerce to allow businesses to go. We actually have a guy from Coca-Cola who's going to be on today yeah. talking about the project that they are, yeah. where they're personalizing the Coke bottles. I mean, it's such an interesting, um, topic of yeah. discussion because it's very personal yeah. and very relatable and I, I think. Yeah, I mean uh, marketing is always so, market, market to the persona of one. But now you have a brand relationship that's online and offline and this is changing how companies are building their assets. So an, on, an offline retail outlet, whether it's a mall or a superstore or whatever, that can be configured in a way that's complementary to the online and then having the, the merging of the data and then having that relationship with the consumer. To me, omni-channel omni is a huge retail challenge. Uh, it's super important because at the end of the day, do you want to have that insight into the customer, but also have the great experience, that's key. Exactly, so we're going to be talking with the Accent Group, who's an award nominee for their awards here, and they're going to be talking about how they are merging multiple brands, hundreds of thousands of SKUs, yeah. to be able to facilitate and also give them the insight that, yeah. that, are, that retailers need on inventory, 
giving them fulfillment options. There's so much positive business outcomes that can be generated from this. So we talked about you know, reducing attrition, getting us faster checkouts, right? Yeah. We want to have something that's very simple, very seamless, and as you pointed out, really interesting yeah. to understand what is the modern technology stack that yeah. can facilitate that. Yeah, great user experience. Retail, intelligence is something I think that's going to be uh, something that's fascinating, and again, it's all about scale and the technology stack and taking that complexity away from the customer because at the end of the day, the digital storefront is, is what people are going to be interfacing with on a primary basis. That's also very complementary to the offline. So super excited, uh, I'm, I'm totally pumped to get into it. Me too, we're looking forward to hosting with you all okay. day, John. All right. And uh, again, we are live in Las Vegas at the Win at Magento Imagine 2018. I'm Lisa Martin with John Furrier. We're going to be here all day, stick around. We're going to be right back with our next guest.